Hi everyone, it's the Velveteen Duck here. A lot of you guys have asked at one point or another for me to make a video featuring my characters, which I haven't ever gotten around to doing. So we're finally going to do that today. We're going to look at two of my characters. Before we begin though, shameless plug here. I did launch the Velveteen Duck website, and on this website, you can find things such as the DSO database, which has pretty much all of the equipment in the game, and guides. Right now, we just launched the Jewel Guide. There's, of course, the Twisted Woods one that's already up on there. There will be other things added in the future as well, so make sure you check that out. The first character we're going to actually take a look at is my Tegan character. This is actually my first character that I ever made in this game. Okay, it's the original, the OG character, eight years old. Not that I have much to show for it because I'm such a procrastinator, but <laughs> it is an old character. Anyways, uh, so let's let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look here at my Tegan character. Okay, so we're taking a look here. This is my Tegan character here on the live server. It is my first, my OG. Here we go. All right. I have several different skill setups for this character. Mainly, I focus on playing Ice Build if I'm solo, which, you know, this is kind of a quiet server, so I frequently play solo. And I also have a setup here for Lightning Build for whenever I'm in a group, especially if I find a team that's going to help me break Lightning Resistance. This is the better setup to go with. Wisdom Tree-wise, I pretty much just use the same setup regardless of whether I'm playing Ice or lightning um so at the present time i'm sitting at level 211 which means because i have very low damage on this character i actually currently don't have second chance active once i gain a few more levels of wisdom i'll probably take some of my points out of this uh, hp regen which by the way is not a very useful stat to have i mean <laughs> great but not that great so i'll probably take the points out of that and then invest it into second chance that's what i'm looking at into the future but uh right now i'm sitting at level 211 so still got a ways to go as for the actual character itself all right let's take a look this is what we have i will actually change my equipment depending on what i am doing this is kind of a more general lazy setup if you will that's more tailored towards my lightning setup at the moment, um, some of my items, I don't have replacements for them, so even though they're not necessarily the best, they are what I use. Alright, so let's start up here. We got the Arachna's Vigor of the Spider. This is an amulet which increases the amount of armor and resistance break from Singularity from Spellweaver, which is quite frankly amazing. Um, and part of the reason why I picked this particular item over, say... Uh, some of the other damage items that you guys might have seen is because those damage items don't seem to want to drop for me. You guys forgot, I did 45 consecutive runs in a single stream of King's Hill and Former Glory and got absolutely nothing to show for it. So, how delightful. In any which case, so that's why I have this. I actually, depending on what I'm doing, right? If I am switching into my ice build, I do still have my Q9 amulet, if I can find it here. There it is. Amulet of the Kraken. I will switch between these two. Both of them already have 10 gem slots open, so uh, all I need to do is unslot at the jeweler, move things around on the workbench, and off I go. So if I feel like I'm going to be playing solo for a period of time, I will switch to Amulet of the Kraken. If I am mostly going to be playing in a group, I'll stick with Arachna's Vigor of the Spider. Now, as for the cloak, this one here is um, crafted from ingredients from Medusa, Duplicitous Trophy. What's interesting is, is that uh, this adds utility to one of your skills, the teleport one to be exact. So moving down here, we have Barak's Instinct. And like I said, this is my setup predominantly for playing Lightning Build. So I prefer to use this Q4 belt because it boosts lightning strike damage. Um, if I am for some reason playing ice build, I can and will switch over to my belt of zeal. The only problem with the belt of zeal is that there's that ramp up process. And if you die, you lose all of your stacks. 
it's a little problematic because this character is not very strong. So if I'm using belts of zeal, I have to work hard at staying alive. It's a little bit of a struggle when you are weak, okay? And moving on to our next item. So this is the promised block item that I mentioned, King's Hell Emblem Brain. I actually really like this item. And I'm probably the only spell waiver who's ever gonna say that. So <laughs> I love this item. I love it. It is it is an amazing block item. Like, hello? You get how much is that? 5600 block on this item? And that's only because I got it as a drop. I didn't actually craft it on the workbench. If you craft it on the workbench, I believe you can actually get it higher than this. So uh, this is a great item for blocks. So it actually allowed me, like it gave me so much block that I went from using two block items, which was the Roshan belt and the Roshan gloves. I transitioned from two block items into a single block item build. So um, yeah, this is great. Whether you're doing one hand or two hand, if you want to play block mage, this is the way to go. Now, okay, and then here's the thing. I love block mage, but block mage isn't right for everybody. There's a lot of players out there who are very mechanically talented. You guys do not need block, all right? I am afraid my hands are not in very good condition, in part because of the kind of work that I do and the fact that I spend a lot of hours of a computer so my hands are very worn down already um i pretty much need block because i will make a lot of mistakes basically the block buys me that extra room in my build for me to stay alive because of the mistakes that i make when i am playing so i mean if you are an excellent player very mechanically talented yeah you don't need this i'm not so i will use block and this is my current preferred block item to have and then moving on, we have the Balor's Ring of Chaos. I believe this is pretty much a standard uh, damage item across all classes. Like, it is, like, the preferred damage item. Everybody loves it. To be honest, I love it too. I would love if I could have two of them active. But since I've opted to use that King's Hill Emblem Ring for block, not really an option. But that's okay. We'll live with it. And then let's take a look here. So we have the Sigurd's Mars Eternal Grasp for my weapon adornment. This is actually not my first choice adornment anymore, and that's because I spend not as much time playing Ice Build as I used to. I spend more time playing Lightning Build now. So I actually wanted to swap out for the Lingering Memories adornment, but it hasn't dropped for me, so I'm just keeping the one that I have right now. Uh, and actually crafting attack, sorry, crafting damage on this item is uh, kind of a waste, to be honest. So I am looking to swap out some enchantments, but for the time being, it's stuck as the damage item. And you'll see why once you look at my next item, which is... Okay, I decided to move into this corner. So we're going to live with me being in this corner now. Um, as far as this weapon goes, this is actually from the Lingering Memories map. Most of you guys probably won't even recognize this item because nobody uses it. <laughs> There's a reason why nobody uses it. It's not that great. That's why. It's as simple as that. Um, even as the person who's actually using this weapon, I admit it's not that good. It's, it's not bad if you are severely lacking in critical value, which is what I was at at the time that I picked this item up. I just didn't have crit. I was like, okay, I need crit. So where am I going to get crit from? I guess I sacrifice some damage and I use this particular two-hand weapon. At some point, I am hoping to transition over to something like Q4, the Barak weapon, or ideally the brand new anniversary weapon, but I'm sure you guys are aware that thing is pretty hard to get your hands on. So I don't have that item. So this is what I live with. So I use Wisdom Seeker. Okay, and then starting up on this side, right hand side, we have the Speechless Terror, which is the helmet I'm currently using. Mainly I'm using this again for crits because again, I have no crit. <laughs> Speechless Terror is actually a pretty good helmet if you're looking for some extra crit. So I don't really have any complaints about this one. I'm actually pretty happy with it. And uh, I would keep it at least for now and probably for a very long time on this particular character. You guys will see when I show you my test server character that I do something a little different over there. 
And then for the pauldrons, I do believe this one is a fairly standard item, again, across many classes. This is a World Drop Master's Pauldrons. And uh, most people will craft either attack speed or crit on this item. For me, it was attack speed because I am playing two-handed. I need that extra attack speed, so this is where I get it from. And then, of course, we have Destructor Plated Robes. Those are very high uh, attack speed line in the unique value. Now, some of you guys, if you have ever watched my guide about attack speed, are probably going, holy crap, Ducky, you, you told, you told all of us to get 4.0 attack speed. What are you doing sitting at 3.8? Let me explain, okay? I actually have the Jewel of Rage and it's upgraded to Extraordinary right now. So I don't have to worry. Even though I'm at 3.8, the moment I go into combat, it's going to jump into some 4.3 or something like that. So it's over 4. Good enough, right? I'll continue to upgrade my uh, Zircons as time progresses, but 3.8, I don't need to freak out. It's okay. It will jump to 4 pretty much within a couple of hits of a monster. And then moving on further down, we have the Glove of Zeal. You guys are allowed to laugh. This is a terrible item, honestly. This is called, I don't really have what I want to have. Therefore, I will use what I do have. I actually wanted to get the Terror Gloves, uh, but they haven't dropped for me. Apparently, they don't like me, so I will live with what I have, which is Glove of Zeal. And you can actually tell that I don't like this item at all because I have put zero effort into actually opening gem slots on this item. <laughs> it's still sitting at the original seven. And also, uh, yeah, well, I don't... Those uh, radiant gems over there were just something that I picked up off the ground and just put on those slots. So, yeah, I'm still looking for a replacement for this one. It, it's coming. And then my last and final item here on this character is the Researcher's Boots. Now, I hesitate to call this the best item, sorry, the best boots in the game. Uh, I, I would disagree with that. I would say it's the best crit boots in the game. That is an undeniable fact, but it is not the best boots in the game. They are just the best boots for crit, which is what I need for my crit starved character. So this is what I live with here on the live server. So for those of you who are wondering, oh, with this kind of character, what can you actually do? I can do a lot. I can do pretty much all bloodshed modes. I can do bloodshed bosses. If I really feel like doing some suffering, I can do parallel world bloodshed as well. As far as the pet collection goes for this particular character, my preferred pet at the moment is actually that brand new cake mini that just came out with the anniversary event. It gives me a little bit of attack speed, a little bit of crit, a little bit of damage, just a little bit of everything that I'm missing is yeah kind of unfortunate i'm just seem to be missing everything here <laughs> um the second favorite choice is actually the bug collecting jabex and that will depend on who is in my group if i have a ranger who's using the passive talents to increase everybody's attack speed i don't actually need the cake meanie it's slightly better in most scenarios for me to use bug collecting jabex in any which case, that wraps up showing off my live server character. Let's actually log out and we're going to take a look at my test server character, which you're going to see has a lot of similarities because, I mean, it is being played by the same person, but also a lot of differences. And I like doing that because test server is meant for testing, guys, so do some wild shit. That's what I do. So this is my test server character. It's a lot stronger, just even at first glance, I'm sure you can tell it's a lot stronger than my live server character, uh, which means it gives me a lot more freedom to try out different things, things that would otherwise be impossible for me to pull off on live server or very difficult. So let's take a look at what we have here. This character is almost exclusively played on ice build. Uh, there's a very good reason for that. First one being it's the test server. I think it has like a population of like 200 players that can be on at the same time. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe it is 200. Moreover, the server is actually located in Europe. Most of the players of this game are located in Europe. So by the time I get around to playing things on the test server, oftentimes I am playing alone. So 
That's why I pretty much exclusively use Ice Build on this character. I do occasionally swap to Lightning, so I do have setups for that. But you almost will never see them because Ice is the way to go if you are playing a solo mage. In terms of Wisdom, it's very similar in setup. I think the main difference here is that I know my character is stronger. And because it is stronger, there is no need for me to worry about dumping all my points into things like Rising Power. I just went right ahead and grabbed Second Chance. And then I am going to finish off my Rising Power and then eventually fill in some of these other nonsense things. But for the time being, this is my Wisdom setup. Taking a look over here at my equipment. First thing that's probably going to jump on and blind you guys is... Holy crap! It's that level 100 equipment! Uh, yes. Guys, it's the test server. Some things don't necessarily make sense. Or, you know, I am actually trying different things. And I want to see the effect. But if I only have a level 100 version of that item, that's what I work with. So, yes, I have two level 100 pieces of equipment. And everything else is like 140, 145. So... Live with it. It's okay. It hasn't killed me yet. Anyways, because this is uh, a character mostly played on ice build, because for the most part, I have to play solo. I just, I don't, I'm not online when people are online on the test server. Um, there's the standard Q9 amulet of the Kraken. There is the standard Sigris Mars Eternal Crest. Those items are pretty much your standard run of the mill for um, ice build type things. You also may notice that I have a couple items that are very similar to what I have going on my live server character. So, big one being, I have the King's Hill Emblem Ring, which again, crafted for blocks. So this one is a crafted ring. You can tell that because it's level 145. Level 145 can only come from the workbench. And then of course, there's also Balor's Ring of Chaos, okay? And if you remember way back when I showed you guys my live server character, I said, Hey, if I'm playing Ice Build, sometimes I swap over to a Belt of Zeal. Ah, look at that. What am I using? A Belt of Zeal. <laughs> That's right. I am using Belt of Zeal over here. And then you'll notice that identical to what I was doing on the live server, I have Master's Pauldrons and Destructor Plated Robes as well. And those ones, though, what I have crafted on them is a little bit different. And it just depends. This character is a... Uh, vastly stronger than my other one, so I don't necessarily have to craft things in the same place, so I can try different things. So, now let's talk about the differences, now that we got all the uh, similarities out of the way. So you may notice that I'm using this one here, which is Merciless Terror. Ideally, I'd get like a level 140 or a level 145 version of this, but I don't have it, so I have level 100. You live with what you got. Here's the really interesting thing. Okay, there is a negative effect on this cloak, which says that your resources can be decreased by 20%. And in case you guys forgot, Spellweavers have a wonderful talent that is called Blood Mage. You do not need resources when you are using Blood Mage. And of course, I am always playing with Blood Mage active. Because of that, there is absolutely no need for me to fear the fact that I am using this item called Merciless Terror. In fact, it's pretty much made, it's tailor-made for Spellweavers using Blood Mage. So for me, I'm like, this is a fantastic item, I need the HP. Um, I decided that for this character, that extra utility from the Medusa Cloak, it's great. But I'd rather just go with raw stats for this one, just to see how it goes. Thing is, once you have enough damage, you don't actually need that extra utility. Um, it does help with boss fights, but it's not necessary. So for me, on this character at least, Merciless Terror is actually an excellent item. So, speaking of damage, where am I getting it from? Well, those are the different items that uh, you didn't see on my other character. Big one here, that's the Barax Untamed Scorn. Ideally, again, I would actually have the Anniversary Weapon, but I don't, so I live with the Q for weapon, which is excellence for damage. So craft all your damage, slap all your rubies in this item. That's the way to go with it. And then what's interesting is I have the poison extinguisher set. So the poison extinguisher set actually has uh, the ability to increase your damage by 50%. There is no negative effect, unlike 
the terror items. So even though it's um, it has a lengthy cooldown, 20 seconds, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. It doesn't come with any negatives. So it's it's a different playstyle in the sense that I don't have to worry about my stats suddenly plummeting below a certain baseline, unlike uh, unlike on the live servers where I do have to be aware of that. Now, has anybody freaked out yet from what you're looking at? What's slot slotted into my hat? Yeah, that's right. I do some really weird things whenever I have time. And one of the really weird things that I decided to do was to use resistant stones. Now here's the thing, there's actually a there's how many different types of resistances in this game now? I don't remember, but anyways, there's a general resistances and then there's the specific ones. What I realized is I could craft a lot of the specific, specific ones into opals and actually end up with way more resistances than if I use the regular resistance stones. So I decided, yeah, heck, why not? I want to make a tanky character. Let's see how that goes. So that's why this one is a little bit unusual choice. Uh, I probably would never recommend this to anybody else to do this. Okay, I'm only doing this because I thought it was an interesting experiment to try out. It, it's not bad. It's not great. Okay. Moving on, we got the gloves here. I have my attack speed on that one. And then I have in my boots, run speed. So like I said, when I was on my other character, I said the lingering memory boots, I have to admit that they are the absolute best for when it comes to crits, but it's not necessarily the best boots in the game. And the reason being that I would actually rank this set, the poison extinguisher set as an excellent set. Like it, you get a free 50% increase to your damage as long as you hit something. 5% chance of triggering. That's really not bad. It's actually pretty darn good. So when you consider that and you weigh it against um, crit, once you have a lot of crit, it's no longer necessary to wear crit boots. I could still use them here on this character, yes, but it's only going to make a difference, but it's only going to make a very small difference, if any difference, I should say. So I've decided, nah, let's not. Once again, those of you who are freaking out, oh my gosh, why is your attack speed sitting at 3.918? Ah, right. I actually have a legendary Jewel of Rage here on this character, so there's no need to worry about that. It's okay. <laughs> it is actually okay to do it the way it is. Okay, folks, so those are my two current Spellweavers. Don't be afraid to change anything that you guys see on here. Most of what I have is what I would consider to be a work in progress. There's always ways to improve. There's always ways to change. Change and make it fit how you want to play. Because if you play in a different style than I do, due to whatever circumstances that you are in, make sure your build matches what you're doing. Don't just blindly copy what I'm doing because, oh, you know, Ducky's doing it. It's got to be right. Absolutely not. Uh, I don't think so. I actually like doing a lot of strange experiments, as you can see with the whole opal in the hat thing. Like, I... it's... it's just what I do. <laughs> so, question for those of you guys who have been asking this for a very long time now. Is this the kind of video that you were looking for, or is there some information that I am missing from this showcase? Please let me know. Leave a comment. I want to know because for the most part I have been focusing on things like event guides or how to farm something or other guides. I'm not the kind of person who really wants to do these kinds of showcase videos but if it is what you guys want to see then let me know. I will make more of those and in the meantime I guess it's happy farming for you guys and uh, <clears throat> back to procrastinating with my phone for me. <laughs>